Hey, good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for joining me for this particular session. I hope you all have had a great, wonderful Ignite so far. Today in this session, we are going to talk about Microsoft Cloud App Security and how you can deploy and manage Cloud App Security to get insights into your Office 365 users' activities and the behaviors of the data access in 365. Before we jump into the Cloud App Security implementation or the management processes, let's talk about the Cloud App Security, what it is, and why do we need Cloud App Security. Cloud App Security is a Microsoft Cloud-based solution that gives you insights into your suspicious user activities. You can generate email-based alerts, and you can configure some remediations against the security alerts based on the user's activities. Cloud App Security is a requirement if you are looking at implementing 365, a cloud-based application, to protect your data and get insights into your security solutions. Because your native solutions, like Firewall or IPS or IDS, they do not have the capability for you to give you the insights on what users are doing in cloud and how they are accessing or sharing the data with the external parties. Cloud App Security is a complete framework that gives you the insights on the user's activities. You can get the insights on the user's activities by having a discovery of your network. You can do the discovery by uploading your end users or firewall logs or the user's activity logs through your scene server. You can do this as a one-time upload to get a snapshot report where you can see your sanctioned or unsanctioned applications being used by the users. Then you have information protection based on the, which you can use the DLP policies in 365 or Azure information protection policies to apply the protection on your data in 365. That does include like, you can have the ability to encrypt the data in the cloud or you can actually block the access based on the DLP policies. Third one is the threat prevention where you actually define your behavior based activities and the alerts against those like, if Riaz is trying to download a data on an unmanaged device, what actions should be taken to stop Riaz from downloading that data? You can suspend Riaz's account. You can have Riaz to sign back into the application or go through the security posture that we have in the company. And the last one is the in-session control. Within the applications, this is a new feature that was being announced like six or eight months ago, in-session control, where you actually have the users to go through a particular activities if they are trying to do something within the SaaS applications like if I'm trying to share my data through OneDrive for business with external parties, you can enforce the in-session controls to have the company policies on top of that to restrict me from sharing my data with third parties. Cloud App Security architecture and how it works. As I said, the very first step in the Cloud App Security is you actually have a discovery component where you can actually have your discovery of your network to see the sanctioned and the unsanctioned applications. You can get this particular report by uploading your firewall logs as a one-time report to get this snapshot. Or the second step is you can actually have automatic log configurations that can upload the logs to Cloud App Security. We highly recommend that you use an automatic firewall logs upload to the Office 365 Cloud App Security so that you can have a continuous reports on your end users' activities and the insights within your on-premises network as well. Once you have the insights, then the second step is the sanctioned and the unsanctioned applications. And that's part of the one recent survey. More than 80% of the employees has uh, admitted that they are using a unsanctioned applications within the infrastructure to do their day-to-day -day jobs, which means you have like 80% risky users within the company as well that are doing unsanctioned applications and doing their day-to-day -day job, which can have a data breach concerns for you guys as a security company. Next one is the app connector. Within the Cloud App Security, the app connector is a, a, using a APIs on the back end to have your third, different third-party application integrations to give you the insights like from Salesforce or you know, if you're using a CRM or third-party application, SaaS applications, you can have the APIs integration with them to get the insights of the user's activities within the third-party applications as well. Next one is the conditional access, and this is based on the Azure AD Premium as well you actually can have the conditional access policies enforced on the end users through the Cloud App Security based on their activities where you can have the user to go through the MFA process or you can have the user to sign a back in or you can have the user access being blocked based on their activities. Another control within the Cloud App Security is the policy-based control where you can have the controls on the end users when they are trying to access the applications from a certain application of the unmanaged platforms where you can enforce the users policy-based session controls on what the user can do from an unmanaged device versus a managed device in the organization. And this is all being driven through the Cloud App Security policies. 
in order for you to deploy a cloud app security, there are four basic steps. Number one is you, can, you need to create a trial tenant, or you can have a cloud app security as part of your E5 license, or you can sign up for a trial tenant as well. <clears throat> Once you have a trial tenant set up, you can actually upload your network firewall logs, or you can have a uh, manual logs upload as well. Again, we highly recommend that you upload, configure the automatic uploads of the logs. This can be done directly through the firewalls, or you can have a same server on premises that can collect the logs from all of your devices and then upload those logs to the Office 5 Cloud App Security. Next one is once you have the logs uploaded, you actually need to connect your sanctioned applications and block the access of the other unsanctioned applications. Microsoft team of analysts, they have about 13,000 plus applications that are ranked based on their regulatory requirements and the security controls and the risk score on top of that. You can actually customize that one based on your requirements on your regulatory components as well. And then Cloud App Security will give you the risk factor for those applications as well. The last one is the configuration of the policies. By default, when you enable Cloud App Security, it gives you 10 built-in uh, policies as well as part of your configuration which gives you like anomaly behavior of the users, mask download of the data, or user sign in from a risky location, or un, uh, you know, unexpected travel for the user and all these type of things. Within the, within the discovery phase of the cloud, uh, cloud app security, it gives you the shadow IT discovery, it gives the cloud application risk assessments, and the alerts on the risky cloud usage. Shadow ID discovery is the usage of the un unapproved IT applications that are being used by the end users. And as I said, there are like more than 80% of the employees in each organization that are using a unapproved IT applications to perform their day-to-day -day operational tasks, and which opens up your organization to the risk of the exposure to the third-party companies. And then the cloud application risk assessment is based on the IT security controls and the regulation requirements of the companies. And then it does have some policies from the MISO team of analysts as well that, that assess each and every application against more than 60 plus controls from Microsoft to ensure whether this application is risky or this application is safe to use within the organization. You can customize those particular controls based on your requirements and your security posture, and it will give you the ranking and the rating of the application, whether this application can be used within the organization or not, or if it's risky, whether you want to allow this application to be used in your organization. The last one is alerts on the risky activities. You can actually have the alerts configured in the Azure Cloud App Security, where you users are performing some risky activities, like Rias has an unexpected travel to somewhere, which is not possible, therefore Rias to travel within five minutes from one location to the another location. It actually generates the alerts for my activities. Or Rias is trying to download uh, from SharePoint or OneDrive from one of the IPs where, from where he never logged into 365 as well. The next one is the information protection. So once we have the discovery and we have the insights on if Riaz is doing some malicious activities or Riaz is trying to download the data or having some alerts against Riaz, you can apply some automatic policies as well to protect the data or the user's behaviors, where you can use the Office of DLB policies or Azure information protection policies where you can restrict Riaz cannot download the data from unprotected device or on from a risky network, which means outside of my corporate network, or you can apply the Azure Information Protection to encrypt the data in cloud, as well as the data which is being downloaded on my machine as well. And in reinforcing the DLP policies will give you the insights on the data access in the cloud, or data being downloaded on the end user's PC, or if the data is being shared externally with someone else from my PC or from my cloud, you actually have end-to-end -end auditing available for that data as well. Third one is a threat detection. So once I have the policies enforced, I have the information protection policies applied, the next step is the enforcing that I'm, we are actually remediating against those particular threats. So in Cloud App Security, you can actually have automatic remediation as well, where you can configure the policies and the actions against that. And those actions can be applied based on your configurations, where you can say, if Reyaz is trying to access the data from a risky location, you can suspend Reyaz user, or you can enforce Reyaz to re-sign into Office 365 as well. Or you can enforce the other policies that will trigger the alerts or suspend Reyaz user account for a certain period of time. In session control, this is new. This one is being released like eight months ago. And within the in session control, you can actually define the user's behavior, and you can define if Reyaz is accessing a certain application what you need to do when Riaz is performing some malicious activities within the application. Do you want to block my access or revoke my access for that application, or you want me to re-log in or re-authenticate the application? 
This can be achieved with the integration with Azure Active Directory, and you can enforce the Azure AD conditional access policies on top of that. And the next one is how you can try the Cloud App Security. So you can go to the Microsoft website on the Cloud App Security portal, and you can sign up for the trial, and you can play around with the Cloud App Security, and you can modify those ones. Or you can actually have the Cloud App Security available as part of the E5 license or the EMS licenses. This is the evaluation, but before we do that, I will go through the Cloud App Security portal that I have available. So this is a portal that I have configured with the Cloud App Security policies, and I need to switch. Can you check? Escape out of it. Okay. So I have the Cloud App Security Portal configured with some of the policies for my user account. And as you can see, I have like 43,000 plus activities being monitored from my portal with 30,000 plus uh, files being monitored. And I do have some alerts over here for my users' activities. And if you need to interrogate those alerts and see what was being done and by which user account and how, you can have the complete insights on this one as well. So the very we will look at this one mass download by a certain user. So I actually configured that alert and generated this alert because I downloaded my OneDrive data on an unmanaged device. And this will give you the insights on the, from which device, from which IP address Riaz actually downloaded the data. And if you need to, you can configure the policies against that to block my access as well. So as you can see, like, what are the risks associated with my user account is my user account is an administrator in 365. It access OneDrive from an ISP, and then it has a OneDrive data downloaded on a Mac operating system and other devices as well, which I never did in the past. So it generated the alert for my user account. And then if you need to interrogate further, you can see what data is being downloaded from which IP address and what was the data file and from where it was being downloaded in 365. Right now, because it's my test tenant, I never configured this policy to block the Riaz user account. But you can have the policies in place to, con to block the user's access and have the policy. I am going to configure this policy right now. I'm just going to configure the access policy. I'm just going to name it Ignite 2018. You can define the risk associated with the policy based on your policy configurations. Uh, access control, I would probably change the category to something else. Uh, session control. Let's change this policy career. I do not have the conditional access in place, so I'm going to configure a different policy. I'm just going to name it Ignite 2018. Within the policy, you can define the policy severity level, low, medium, high. You want to configure this for single user activity, or you want to have a policy trigger once it's being like happened like five times a day or ten times a day. And then you can define the filters as well, what this policy is going to do. I'm just going to type in the policy configurations in terms of I'm going to apply this policy based on my source. And this will be our access control. And then under governance, as you can see, I have a policy that in case this policy is being uh, met and the trigger is being generated, what actions I can take? I can actually suspend the user account, or I can have the user to sign back in, or I can actually notify the user as well as probably we can notify the security of the team or the end user's manager as well. The Cloud App Security, eventually a solution that every organization right now is trying to use in Office 365 to get insights to their SaaS application usage within 365 and other SaaS applications. Right now, the uh, application catalog from Microsoft, it's about 16,000 plus applications that they have, and this catalog is increasing day by day. And once, you know, this gives you the insights for the third-party SaaS applications as well, like Salesforce or, 
or if you're using a ADB or some other third-party applications as a SaaS offerings, and you will get the insights to Cloud App Security as well. And that's all. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me.